or or they die or they get fired. That's pretty much it. Okay. You know, most of the people that leave will tell you, oh, I didn't like Walmart when I left Walmart. A lot of times there's always more to the story. You know, oh, and, and see, if you say, for instance, we had one guy that lived in Florida mm-hmm. and he wanted to go to Florida, but Florida was not hiring. So he went through school with me and he hired and, and worked at Gas City. After a year was over, he transferred to Florida. So now he gets a priority to go from where we were to Florida because he's already a, a, a driver, already assigned to us. So he, he gets a priority to go to Florida. He just had to stay somewhere else for a year. All right. And, and again, Walmart do work on seniority, right? So a brand new driver, that yes. would, a brand new driver would, wouldn't come in and, and, and get the prime spots, right? Well, believe it or not, there's a lot of primary, there's a lot of senior, senior drivers that don't even want what we think is the best job. They like those ones working at night coming in and having a, a dedicated route where they go, you know, pick up this load, that load, and then have a backhaul, picking up some eggs or something, and where they getting, you know, more miles than the average driver. But, you know, we think that the prime slot is like working in the afternoon. And see, what I ended up doing, I I started off at 1130 at night, but I was in a day cab, still three people, but I was going home every day. But that was too much. By the time I got home, all I did was went home and go to sleep. You know, but I'm home every day. So then I said, why am I going home every day when I can stay in a sleeper truck and stay there and make an extra $200, you know, uh, a week? You know, I mean, two, eight, $9,000 extra a year. And then, and then everything that I did went out and came back. So if I need to go home, I can still, you know, run to the house and do something and come back because I was only about an hour. I only lived about 50 miles away from Walmart, you know, but they, you know, but they pay you $42 a night to spend the night in your truck for eight hours, you know, so you take 10 hours off. So technically you could say, I could use two hours to go here and do this and do that and just go in the sleeper for eight hours. Okay. okay. And, uh, and so my second well, see, I started in December, and I think they started the new bidding around March, May, you know, 2000. And so being that, you know, they show you all the positions open. Like, I was number 118, 119 or something. So they start off with number one, and they can pick any job they want. Then number two, you know, everything. Then number three and four. And they call each person individually and tell you what they got left over and those are your options and choices that you got left. And by the time they got to me, they had 1130 slot at night in a sleeper, you know, with two other drivers. And that's what I chose, which was pretty good for me. And it, you know, I had the same working schedule that I had, but now I got a sleeper, you know, and, um, and I don't have to go home every day. And instead of going six and three, I started doing five, two, five, three. And those schedules are good because they rotate like like two weeks in a row. You might work Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday. And so, and then the next, after that second week, now you'll move over to Tuesday to Saturday, then Tuesday to Saturday. Then the next week, uh, two weeks, then you'll go Wednesday to Sunday, you know. And so it kind of rotates, you know, every two weeks, you know, because like I said, the first week you'll work Monday to Friday. The second week you'll work, I mean, you'll be off Saturday and Sunday. Then you'll come back and work Monday and Friday, Monday to Friday. Then you're off Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So now you come back in Tuesday. You see what I'm saying? And so every two weeks you rotate up one day. And then you can plan your schedule out and see what days you're going to be off way in advance. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Doug, man, one last and, thing. And, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You, you was about to say something? No, I was going to tell you one last thing oh, okay. about this. The good, the good thing about working five days off two and working five days and off three, if you take off five days, you're getting 10 days off. You know why? Why? Because you're off two days before your five and you're off three days after your five. So when you take off five days from work, you're off 10 days. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. 
All right. So- and, and that's all you got. That's all you got to do is take five days off, you know, uh, that you would normally work, and you're you're automatically off ten days by taking five. All right, that's what's up. And you and you and you're getting about at least twenty one days off a year. So if that with that case, you can take off forty days. You know, off your with twenty days off, you can take off almost forty days in a year. All right, that's what's up, man. All right, so Doug, man, uh, thank you <laughs> very much for uh, for all of that sharing, all that good stuff with us tonight, man. Hey, listen, Doug, Walmart, yes sir. Uh, Wal- they they say Walmart don't 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 care for us drivers no more, man. Um, we can't oh, we, we, we we can't park we can't park in a parking lots no more, man. What's what's the deal with that? Why we can't park in a parking lots no more? Well, Walmart don't a lot of the Walmart don't own a parking lot. You know, a lot, a lot of times I think from what I was told, well, there's a reason why. See, they take care of us. We we can park in the parking lot, but a lot of drivers that park in the parking lot leave their trash and and they park anywhere and they do all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And and um, it's just it's a it's a whole bunch of reasons for that. And like in Georgia, it ain't Walmart; it's the law. A lot of say it's the law, you know, where you can't park in some of those parking lots. And if you got too many people in there, all kinds of things can happen. So, but I don't think it's always it's all just Walmart doing that. You know, it's a lot of places, a lot of those parking lots are rented and they don't belong to Walmart. They have security and some other people that actually monitor those, those uh, parking lots. So I mean, local- some of them in Georgia, they'll boot you and everything. Put a boot on your things, about $500 to get them off. But when a Walmart driver parks in the parking lot, it's, it's that store's responsibility to make sure we're safe. So no more. So like so I no parked more in a parking safe. lot one time with a bunch of trucks. I parked in a parking lot one time with a bunch of uh, trucks in it, and when I woke up, all the trucks were gone, and they had me kind of like in a, you know, like 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 roped off and stuff. <laughs> Man, you know, and they didn't bother me, but you know, all the other trucks had to go. So no more. So no more safe haven with WalMarts. No more, huh? Well, like I said, it's a lot of them, you know. Uh, I, you know, I can't explain it, but you know, like I said, sometimes you get too many trucks in a parking lot. But there's some a lot of places where you still park on the far end, you know, far away from the truck, where they don't bother you. I mean, there's still a lot of places where they can still park. Is there you know? is there a possibility for a driver to like actually go into Walmart, do his shopping, come back out to his truck? And 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 he can he can fight the the either the boot or the ticket by showing that he went in there to actually shop instead of overnighting or doing his ten hour. I don't know, but I would say yes. I would say that the driver should have at least a, a two hour or or something to actually stop and go in and shop and come out. You know, I just don't. You know, I can't. You know, say for sure. But I would think that's reasonable that if you go in there and shopping, but you never know who you're dealing with. You know, you never know. So I, I you know, I don't know. All right. All but right. I would assume that I should, you know, every truck driver should have a right and a certain time frame to be able to go in and shop in Walmart. All right. That's what's up, man. Oh, uh, last but not least, the benefits. Uh, you you did mention all, all the benefits, but you also mentioned that you, you don't have to pay for anything either because Walmart gives you a car, uh, a credit card. So do they give you like a, a, a discount? Like, you know, if, let's say if you want a TV or something like that. Oh, we get 10 percent off uh, in Walmart. OK, you know, we get you know, we get we, we get 10 percent off on. Most of the uh, household stuff, but the groceries we don't get that much off, and um, and and we actually have a credit card. Like if we have to spend the night somewhere or whatever like that, we can we can uh, choose whatever hotel we want up to one hundred and fifty dollars a night. All right, I I know I said I was going to let you go, but I got to play devil's advocate with you for a minute. Why? Yeah, go ahead. Why in the hell if if Walmart has a low turnover? 
and they got all these uh, they they got all these uh they got you guys Walmart transportation and they all, and they outsource to different uh trucking companies why in the hell are there uh, are there empty shelves at Walmart bro you know what i've been going into Walmart too i don't know what's going on right now I, you know cuz i've been looking for some stuff but i just think it's a, a crisis all over Right now, you know, even with stuff coming in, coming from other places, because if we don't get stuff in, because see, a lot of outside carriers bring all the stuff in to us in bulk. And then when they get to the DCs, the DCs break it down and, and send it off to the stores. So if we're not getting it in, then we can't ship it out. Mm. You know, we don't pick up all of our stuff. We pick up some of it. Like, you know, sometime when we go out, you know, we'll get a backhaul to go here to pick up Tropicana or Minute Maid or or whatever, if we have some available. If not, we come straight back. But there's a lot of outside carriers that come into Walmart bringing in a lot of stuff. You know, watermelons and, you know, a lot of stuff like that, and apples and, you know, canned goods, Campbell soup, all that stuff. All right. You know. There you guys have it. You heard it from a Walmart driver. It's not Walmart. <laughs> all right, Doug. It's not all us. Now, we, we, don't, we don't produce everything that we put out. You know, we, we get it bring it here. They bring it in to us also, you know. All right. That's, oh, man. That's what's up. Doug, man, thank you very much for coming on, man. You are a citizen. So next time uh, you got something going on or just keep me posted uh, with your surgery and everything to make sure you're all right, bro. I appreciate it. I will. Right. And I guess I'll be able to listen to this podcast and yes. and if I wanted to I could I can I can uh copy it and send it to someone else to yes. look at and listen to too, huh? Yes you can. I will send you the link as soon as I post it. I appreciate it, man. I really do and I enjoy talking to you and I really love working where I'm at and I think a lot of us and when I say us, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. We don't realize the opportunities that we have here. And, you know, a lot of us got started in the trucking business. And before we even learn how to drive and learn all the ins and outs, we're starting to buy our own vehicles now and uh, without having all the knowledge that we need. And I just say, you know, I try to tell people, take your time, learn everything you can about trucking before you want to jump right into trying to own your own truck and start your own business, because there's a lot out there that you got to learn. Exactly. You know, that you need to learn. And that's one and to now, grow yeah, on. Yeah, and I forgot to tell you, too, that on the average, I only run about 1,500 miles a week, you know, and I and to making the amount of money that I make, which is twice of an average truck driver as a company driver. You know, the average driver only makes forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year, if that. And these guys are running uh, 3,000 miles a week. I'm uh, the max I'll run is two thousand, but I'm usually running between thirteen and fifteen hundred miles a week and in five days, and still making to bring up, that type of money I get in and right, still exactly. making an upwards of eighty k or more. And, yes, sir, that's true because we get paid for every stop we make, every pickup we make, every live load we make, every you know every drop and hook. We get paid for everything. You know, averaging about ten dollars. Uh, my average per day with the amount of miles that I run was $318 per day. So if I'm running five days a week, I'm making about $1,500, um, you know, every week. So I'm grossing about 3000 or more, you know, every two weeks. And I usually bring home, you know, uh, every two weeks between eighteen and 2200 That's what's up. And that's after everything has come out. And, you know, like I said, a lot of people don't like talking about it, but I don't. You know, you know, I have proof. I know what I make. That's what's up. That's why you keep the receipts. Doug, man, thank you very much. Right. I really do appreciate it. Yep. Um, much success, uh, successful surgery, and uh, I'll talk to you uh, after the surgery. How's that? Okay. All right, sir. I will. I'll All let you know. All right, man. Take it easy. And I'm looking forward to getting back in that. I'm looking forward to getting back in that truck and make this extra thousands of dollars. That's what's <laughs> up, man. That's what's up. Thank you, sir. All right. All right.